Whenever I come across people who try their best to put smiles on the face of others, I become very happy. People really sacrifice a lot to make others happy. And this is what these young people are doing in Ayikuma. They really understand the meaning of education and that is why they decided to come up with an organization called Libraries Without Wars. They are really transforming lives through books. As we say, education is the key. The founder of Libraries Without Wars, Sir Paul Mensa Amano, and his co-founders decided to use the letter they have to support young ones who have interest in reading. Hello guys, before I go, my name is Faculty Bills and this is called Discovering the Hidden. We are here to bring you what you need to know. Stay tuned, subscribe to my channel and also like, share, comment and subscribe. What do I am right now? This is Ayukuma. Do you know Ayukuma? Oh, you don't know that you are missing a lot. Now, you know, there are some people here making greater impact in the lives of um, people in Ayukuma. So we are right here. We are here to talk to the founders of Libraries Without Words. Have you heard of Libraries Without Words before? You know, copy. Now you can check out Libraries Without Words on Facebook, Instagram, all the social media platforms. So we are here to have some discussions with them. Let's cast some vibes. There are a lot of good stuff in Ghana. <laughs> people are making very good impact. But how do you get to know them? Today we are here. This is Ayukuma. We are here to know more about libraries without walls. I've been hearing of libraries without walls, libraries without walls, but I don't know the brain behind it. So today I'm here and I think we have one of the founders here. So my name is Bright. What's your name? My name is AJ Richard Gilchrist. Okay, so so are you the founder or co-founder or what? Yes, I, I am actually a co-founder. The founder is Paul Amano, who Paul Amano. started the whole project. And we thought that it was important for us to give him the backing. Okay, so, well. okay, so how many are you? So as it stands now, we are basically about uh, five in number with two ladies. Myself, uh, Paul Amano, the founder himself, uh, Emmanuel Ellison, Madame Abigail, and then Miss Charity Anson. We actually began this project in my views out of school. Oh, okay, so tell us the brain behind libraries with ours. Well, the whole idea is um, this NGO, my views out of school, where once upon a time we all found ourselves as um, volunteers. Of course, after university, there were no jobs, and so we thought that why not? After national service, we can also dedicate ourselves to our communities. And so we decided to volunteer in Malview Outreach School, which is an NGO supporting children with a lot of talent. So once upon a time in 2017, uh, these categories of student, uh, teachers find themselves as volunteers in the school. So we're looking at options, what we can do to help the children improve their learning. Then, at one of these uh, usual deliberations, you know, I remember vividly very well, myself and Paul were handling the JHS department. It was like, said, like, can't we hang some books at where the children have been playing? I said, wow, this will look very unique. So quickly we were looking at what do we use? Then he suggested we, 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 we take a basket. Basket? Yes, yeah, basket. Wow. And I asked Charlie, where are we going to get this box, uh, basket to hang the books. Then he remembered that uh, the school has some woven sort of nets. Okay. So quickly he went to bring that up and said, okay, so this one we can hang them. So in fact, on that very day before the close of school, we have prepared the materials. Wow. Then the next day we say, okay, we want to sell this idea to you know, the staff. Let's see how best we can implement this whole idea. And Lo and behold, in fact, everybody bought into the idea, suggesting it is one way of going to improve student reading ability. So we decided, okay, let's try it for Wednesdays and Fridays and see if that will be more ideal. So as quickly as possible, we wrote that out. Early morning, we set up the book. In fact, he was. we all live very close to the organization. And so, in fact, coming here early was never a problem. 
as early as 6 o'clock, he was here. Myself will be here saying, Mama, Madam Charity, who is even the caretaker of the facility, was already here. And so we started the whole project, we hung the books. So by the time the students come from their various homes, the books are hung. Wow. Luckily enough, we have some of the students also in the boarding facility. You, in the you hung them here? We hung them all over the place. So some there, some there. So it was even the more reason why we did these chairs, just to ensure that uh, okay. they have a comfortable place of sitting instead of... Uh, and it was amazing. Okay. It was okay. very amazing. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's very interesting. So, tell us, what has been the impact so far? For us since 2017, um, if I am not mistaken, I think that the Library Without War project, or what we initially called it as three library projects, okay. has had a tremendous impact on the students and, of course, all the people who have passed through the Malview Outreach School, or what we usually call in short, MOP. We have seen since we started the project the, the rate at which the children themselves have become curious with books. The children themselves are on a constant basis looking through books. They want to find out, even they want to interpret pictures by their own. Um, since 2018, the school has sat for the BEC. And since then, after 2018, we have seen a very dramatic uh, improvement, especially across all subjects. The English specifically has improved. Um, when we sat for the BEC in 2018, our school was ranked seventh best. Seventh best in Shai Wow. District. Wow. In fact, in 2019, God being so good, we are currently the second best school in that the district. Well. That is an improvement. That is an impact we have seen right from what we started the project or libraries without war or what we call the three library project. And in fact, the management of the school have been so much supported. In fact, uh, shout out to Madam Renee who has been supporting the school from various angles. Uh, Mr. Eric Kwame Ago, we say, in fact, are you cool to you for this noble idea of even giving us the platform to exchange this idea with the Mount View Outreach School? And for us, in fact, in 2020, we are likely to be the best in the district. Sure. That is not a, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, if, if you hear libraries, I me, mean, I know the meaning of libraries. So, yes. libraries without words, it seems some kind of compound. Yes. So, why attach without words to libraries? Yes, um, for the whole idea of the library without all, I mean, but the general meaning of a library is a building that has books. Okay. Well, like, no, the school doesn't have the facility to build a library, but we can do something on our own. So the whole idea of starting it even under the tree was like, ordinarily, if a student wants to read, he should be able to read our first school. I mean, in an open space, he doesn't need the physical building to read. Luckily, you know, the school has some books there. And so luckily, we said, oh, why not? We should create an open library in our case, where students can just pick a book anywhere from where they are playing to just sit down there and read. And so the whole idea of library without war was like, no, we don't have the physical money to put up a project in our community, in our various schools. Neither is government able to support that project. And for even private organizations like this, if you don't have somebody coming to support, we, we, you physically do not have a, a physical library. So we wanted to make the whole project like, no, we should, we should disabuse our minds from library as a physical structure and let the, the children own library as I can read anywhere. So that is basically what brought the idea of okay, the library. So basically it's, it's some kind of charity organization. Yes, that is. The of your school. But do you itself. get funds from other people or you fund everything yourself? Luckily enough, I think we have had a lot of support from friends. Um, I think uh, Mr. Alan from Scotland has been raising some small support, seeing our activities on the social media. He has support. In fact, usually when we go out and we are not in school, we support the children with some snacks. And basically, our means of transport has always been a challenge. And so, of course, uh, the key actors mobilize the resources themselves and I think more recently we have had support from uh, other places. In fact for the books we have had an um, um, international resource, uh, resource foundation owned by one pastor Sudi. He supported it with a lot of books 
We have also got a lot of uh, support from Malview Outreach School, whose books we started with using it as a means of uh, letting our uh, children in the community read. We have also had support from the town itself. Uh, several individuals have come on board to support us with uh, snacks. And we are so much grateful. And in fact, everywhere we go, the support has always been coming from um, the members themselves and some few friends. And we have also had occasions where I think two other people have raised some little support for us on Facebook, on GoFundMe. Okay. And we have used all these things to procure some books and to procure some items, especially for our children who will be reading, especially in our community. And so basically, that is how we are able to fund this whole project of Libraries Without Walls. Okay, so is it meant for just the school or you have other people coming from the community to come here to read or is it just for the school or for the community? Yeah, so the, the project started in the school or in the organization, Malview South Free School. However, we saw during the COVID period, uh, at a point where the government relaxed the protocols a bit, we thought that for our children to stay in the house for well over six, seven, eight months, uh, we ruled out the free mobile library. So this was more or less like the community-owned version of the three library project. So we ruled out this free library project just to, in fact, we zoned our community into various places where we don't have uh, the larger crowd of the students because of the COVID protocols. And so what we did was that we earmarked 10 spots across the length and breadth of our community, Ayukuma. And so uh, on a weekly basis, there was a target area. On a weekly basis, there was a target area. And so now, uh, Libraries Without Walls, free mobile library. It's more or less like a community project. And so not necessarily. We have had invitation from other places who have seen our activities. And, but of course, the challenge still remains that how do we get there, especially when we don't have uh, the means to be able to carry out the project. And so that is how we are currently running it. So as it stands now, in fact, our community in Ayukuma is fully much aware of what the free mobile library looks like. Okay, so let's see. How do you see libraries without us in the next five years? The next five years ahead of us, uh, for us, the focus is great and we want to, we wish we could, we could, we could cover the entire community. We wish we could cover the whole of Ghana. We, we wish the project could be replicated in other areas where there are no physical libraries. So for us, we believe that this our little we are doing in our own small way is something probably other stakeholders will come on board to, be, to support the project. And we can get volunteers across the length and breadth of our nation to be able to help the next generation. In fact, our motto and our focus is well, nurturing the next generation of readers. Now, what we believe is that an educated reader or a reader by sense is able, or is a confident child. And a, a reading child is a child who is able to see the, the, the future ahead of him or her. And so our focus is basically in the next few years to be able to replicate the project across the length and breadth of our nation. But we are beginning from one place at a time, and Ayukuma seems to be the, the spot as okay. we do that. Okay, so right now, tell me why an investor or anyone who is willing to help come in and support you give me like three reasons why they should come for us at library without war project uh, one of our motivating factor is to be able to bridge the uh, sustainable development goal four which is education so for us education is key and once the global community see education as the next impact for the world then once it's an educated project, it is one of the more reasons why we think that uh, uh, we need some support. Yeah, what's your name? Ernest. What's your name? Ernest. Ernest what? Nyavlo. Nyavlo. Where are you from? I'm from Ayukuma. Ayukuma? Yes. What class are you? I'm in class five. Class five. So what's the meaning of a library? Library is a place where we people gather to read. A library is a People gather to read. Yes. Library. It's library. Yes, spell. L I B A R Y. Library. L I B A R Y. Nope. L I B A. 
L I B A L I B R A R Y. L I B R A R Y. L I B R A R Y. And that's correct. Okay. Hold it. Show them. What's your name? I'm Miriam Nati. Miriam Nati. Miriam Nati. Nati. Where are you from? I'm from Aikuma. Aikuma. What class are you? JHS3. JHS3. Okay, then let me intensify your question. <laughs> so, um, I'm coming. I'm coming to spell a word for you. Uh, then after that, you, you, you give me the pronunciation, okay? C R E S C E N D O. Please the word again. C R E S C E N D O. Crescendo. Talking to my Crescendo. C R E. C R E S C E N D O. Crescendo. Crescendo. Is that right? My name is Tetevi Timothy. Tetevi Timothy. Where yes. are you from? I'm from Accra. Accra, which part of Accra? Domi Pilatu. Domi Pilatu. How old are you? I'm, I'm 11 years. 11 years. Yes. So, what do you want to become in the future? I want to become an engineer. An engineer? Yes, sir. Okay, so an engineer, what are you supposed to do now? I'm supposed to learn very well. Talk louder. I'm supposed to learn very well. Okay, learn very hard, okay? Yes. But it's not easy. Okay. Learn very hard, okay? Okay, sir. Okay, so as an engineer, you want to become an engineer. Okay. So, if I have two balls, I have two balls, hmm? Okay, sir. And then you come to my house. And I give you two balls. How many will be left? So zero. Zero. Sorry. That's correct. Okay, so let's go. Please take off your milk mask. What's your name? My name is Atachi Dao Akpeni. What's your name? Atachi Dao Akpeni. Oh, okay. You're an Emmy, right? Please, yes. But where are you from? I'm from Ayukuma. Ayukuma? Yes. How old are you? I'm nine years old. Nine years. So what do you want to become in the future? A nurse. Okay, so your question. Name Madam Nurse. <laughs> if someone is sick, hmm? Yeah. If someone is sick, yes. like your friend yeah. is sick, hmm? Yeah. What will be your first action? I'll send the person to hospital. Mm -hmm. And I'll let the doctor look after the person. Is that not brilliant? Perfect. That's great. When someone is sick, you see some of you, when somebody is sick, what to do? You do self medication. You don't even know the cause of the disease or the cause of the sickness. And you assume and you start prescribing drugs for the person. <laughs> and then in the end, you just aggravate the sickness. So the best thing for you to do is, when someone is sick, the first thing you have to do is, you take the person to the hospital for the doctor to examine the person very well before they can prescribe any new drug for the person. Okay? Clap for her. What's your name? Otubia Matilda. Matilda. Where are you from? I'm from Accra. Accra? Yes. Which part of Accra? Pokwasi. Pokwasi. Do you come all the way from Pokwasi? I'm a brother. You're a brother? Yes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So how old are you? I'm 16. 16. And yes. what class are you? DHS3. DHS3. Okay, so <coughs> I'm coming to spell a word for you. Then tell me the pronunciation, okay? Okay. So P L A 
U S I D L E T L E U S I D L E Plausible. Plausible. That's correct. So what's the meaning of plausible? If something is plausible, what does it mean? <laughs> okay, this is plausible. Like let's say we are in some kind of conversation and you bring up an idea. And I say, oh, that's a plausible idea. What does it mean? If it's something is plausible. A great idea. A great idea. Great idea. Great idea. Do you think it's correct? Great idea or something that is reasonable. Okay. But right, that's good. Clap for her. So now let me give you your work. Okay, so I'm spelling a word for you. Then you give me the pronunciation, okay? I think this is a word that Paul likes most. But you've been using this word way back in school. So <laughs> D O Double L O P D O Double L O P Dollop Dollop Yes So what's the meaning of Dollop? Dollop So please can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> okay, listen, okay My piece of Okay, my piece of pie Was served with a dollop of ice cream Dollop Dollop of ice cream. My like, piece of pie was served with a dollop of ice cream. Like large amounts of something. No, that's the inverse. Large, that's the inverse. So, if that's the inverse, a small. Small. Clap for her. Okay, so like looking at the numbers now, are you really impressed or...? Yes, yes, we are very impressed with the way the children embrace the readings. You know, actually, um, most children fear to read. They feel like reading is something that is very difficult. But with this exposure, they are able to learn how to read. You know they're saying that if you want to hide something from a black you man, you will keep it in the book. Yes, but sure. with them opening book every day, one, they learn new vocabulary, they are able to express more and speak freely. So it is something I know that uh, it will go a long way. Yeah. And I'm also happy to see the way they have embraced and reading skills. What, what was the motivation behind this whole live issue that was how it started and the, 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 the person who brought up the whole idea? Well, actually, uh, we're motivated by a student who was old enough but couldn't read. Her oh. name is Precious Amevian Kun. Uh, she was a speaker in Malvio's outreach. And then at her age, she couldn't read. So it became a challenge. And uh, our founder, Sir Paul Amano, okay. thought wise that yes, why don't we create something and give this child an exposure to be able to read? So as he went on one hour, I realized that after a period of time, the child who could not write her own name, the child who could not spell three letter words, was able to come out boldly to read simple, simple letters. So then we decided to give that opportunity to all children who are having reading challenges. So through Sir Paul, Sir Gil, Sir Yima, I and other volunteers, we had to come together every morning to draw closer to the children and help them to read, especially those who are having reading challenges. Reading challenges. Yeah. Okay, so, um, Miss Charity, Miss Charity we've, we've, we've had some conversation with Miss Charity. Yeah. Right now, I don't know, but I will know how to, you know, publish this out. So, you know, we, we are out there, we see what you do. Okay. Sometimes when you're doing something, you think nobody's watching, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people out there watching you understand yeah. so as time goes on you realize that you get the numbers people yeah. will start following you and yeah. because in ghana it's not easy for you to build a brand or yeah. come up with something it's where the initial stage is very difficult for you to get people to even follow you and then you know this kind of things you know Ghanaians, we don't really um motivate like that yeah, yes yeah. so it, it's, it's time so when you start as time goes on you see that the numbers will start coming yeah. you understand so I like your ideas behind this whole library without walls and you know I'm really impressed, you know.
for you to have that kind of mentality, helping the young ones read and all that. You know, education is the key. Yeah. So if if you are helping the young ones to also acquire some kind of knowledge, then I think you are doing a great job. Thank you. All right. So that is basically all. I'm done with everything. Thank you very much. Thank you for welcoming me. You are welcome. You're always welcome to join us. Thank you. I'll be coming here from time to time. All right. We'll be expecting you. All right. Okay. Thank you.